uh, into the third lecture of the second week. So, in the first two lectures, we talked about uh, the basic structure of a skin as a part of the integumentary system. So, today what we will do, we will cover three topics, small bits and pieces. The first thing we will talk about one of the very popular aspect for all the youths is the skin color. So, there are advertisement all over the television and uh, different media that you know you can make your skin brighter and much more glowing and all these kind of things. What is the truth behind it? Is it really possible? But even before we know the truths and everything, we have to understand why certain people are having dark complexion, whereas other people are having brighter compa complexion or a lighter complexion. What is the science behind it? So, today's topic, the first topic what I am going to deal with will be the skin coloration followed by the stretch marks or the wrinkles which appears in your skin through the ages or during some injury or in the case of women during pregnancy, the abdominal stretch marks and everything what are the genesis or what is the genesis of those kind of stretch marks and uh, third we will be talking about a uh, little bit about the structure of the hair and the sebaceous gland and uh, the gland which helps in secretion of sweat, apocrine and the merocrine glands or the sweat glands and we will be concluding with the structure of the nail. To start off with the skin coloration. So, whenever we talk about skin coloration, so colors are nothing but pigments. So, whenever you see anything irrespective of what I am teaching you in this course, you have to realize it must have a pigment, some pigment must be involved. Okay. So, now if there is a pigment from where this pigment is coming and if you understand from where it is coming, the next level where comes the biochemistry into play or the chemistry into play is uh, how this pigment is being synthesized, what are the ingredients or is it genetically driven and likewise and so on and so forth. Of course, we will not go into that detail out here, we will be only talking about why we are having different kind of skin color and the second thing we will talk about what is the genesis of it, why is it so. So, in order to explore this question, let us go back, take a reverse gear and again revisit all the layers. Okay? So, the layers if you remember your lowermost layer which is striatum germinativum is the lowermost layer, spinosum, granulosum, lucidum, corneum. Okay? So, we are having these five layers. So, now talking about skin color, this is the topic what we are going to deal today okay, and this is your lecture 3 and week 2, L 3 W 2 today. So, the skin color is a function of two parameters, the pigment cells which are present in the epidermal layer and the blood vessels underneath it is in the dermal layer. So, let us enumerate those two. So, one, so it is basically epidermal pigments okay, and dermal circulation because they give a contrast because of the blood vessels which are present underneath the epidermal layer. And within epidermal layer, there are two pigments which are pronounced, one is the carotene pigment, you must have heard about beta carotene, the other one is the melanin pigment. Okay. So, carotene pigment is mostly, if you forget always remember about carrots, this is basically orange yellowish, which is the color of the carrot just for your kind of you know remembering it. This is how we used to remember. Okay. 
and uh, these are present in the cells of stratum corneum. Stratum corneum. Okay. Now, carotene is help in the synthesis of vitamin A. We will be talking later about it. And this is also involved, this vitamin A, apart from its role in vision, is also involved in maintaining the epidermal layer. Healthy epidermal layer is being maintained. So, what we see here, carotene has two functions. It offers certain coloration to the skin and second thing what it offers is, it maintains the healthy skin. So, that is why they say it is good to eat carrot and food from nature which are rich in beta carotene and essentially it is a long chain which gets split up and form vitamin A. Okay. So, the next pigment which is involved in it is the melanin. Okay. So, the melanin on the other hand is synthesized from an amino acid called tyrosine. Kindly look into that structure and tyrosine is the key molecule from where melanin is synthesized and it is synthesized in the cells of melanocytes. You can go back and check it where melanocytes are present. If you remember the very first lecture in the integumentary system, I told you that this is where the melanocytes are present in the lowermost layer. Okay. Now, melanin as a molecule is a very interesting one. Melanin absorbs UV rays okay. and it is a very, very I should say a very, very strong UV, UV absorber and uh, <clears throat> these melanin pigments are packed in small vesicles like this which are called melanosomes and these melanosomes are present in the melanocytes. Okay. And uh, melanocytes has a ratio, they in the lowermost layer, this melanin as I told you in the lowermost layer, germinative layer, germinative layer. So, the ratio is around 1 is to 5 to 1 is to 20. Okay. So, around 1000 to 2000 melanocytes, MC I am just putting melanocytes per millimeter square. This is the kind of number of melanocytes which are present. Now, if you look at the people who are from the Caucasian race, so those who does not know what I meant by Caucasian race is the people who anthropologically have origin from the Caucasus mountains which is the current day Russia what you see somewhere for the northern part of Russia, the Caucasus mountains. So, those rays which is originated from the Caucasian mountains are called Caucasian rays and most of the Caucasian rays people are have brighter skin, fairer skin, very brighter skin and there is another interesting thing you can remember the Caucasian rays, we will talk later about it. They have higher concentration of alcohol dehydrogenase gene. In other words, they can withstand more alcohol in their body. So, this is a catch. On the contrary, we are not from the Caucasian, we are from different race from origin, we have lesser amount of alcohol dehydrogenase. So, we cannot consume lot of alcohol as compared to the people with the Caucasian race. We will talk later about all these things, but just to give you a catch about it. So, the Caucasian race people who are fairer and brighter skin, if you look at them, so the distribution of melanocytes, so in their case the melanocyte remains. So, if I put the layer from the bottom 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So, in the case of Caucasian people, you will see the melanocytes are concentrated in the first two layers from the bottom. Okay. So, this is the uppermost layer. Whereas, people in India and all who are slightly more darker complexion or even more darker complexion have the melanocyte concentrated on the third layer. So, you are much more upper and it is very interesting thing you will realize. 
in these cells which are carrying the melanocytes, if you see these cells, so you will see most of the melanocytes are concentrated close to the nucleus. Did you wonder why? These are the melanocytes, okay? And when did the melanocytes? Here is the nucleus of the melanocytes, and here you are having the melanosomes concentrated. There are two questions I will ask you. Think over it. First, the first question I'll ask you: Why is it so that we are having a darker complexion? If you and most of the people from the Caucasian race will have a much way more brighter complexion than this. Okay? Why these two words? And in every language, in Hindi we call it a gora and kala, and I mean in every language you have darker and fairer. Why is it so? I told you the reason, but then why is it so? I told you that you know darker skin people have on the third layer the melanocytes are concentrated. First, your catch lies, you draw the map of the world. If this is the world, here you are having the north pole, here you are having the Antarctic which is the south pole, here you are having the equator, here you are having the tropic of Cancer, here tropic of Capricorn at 23 and a half degree north, 23 and a half degrees south okay. and here you have the equator E q. So, this is where if you look at it the maximum sun rays are falling. Here you have the lesser amount, these are very cold places. So, where you are having maximum sun rays, these maximum sun rays will have maximum amount of U V rays. So, in order to protect, if you are closer to the equator, you will be exposed to more and more UV rays. So, the continent, the dark continent Africa, which has all the three rolling. So, you have like this Africa, if you look at, look at it. So, the closer you are to the equator, chances are you will have, a, chances are unless there is a migration and settlement or within that you are living at higher altitude, chances are you will be of darker complexion. Because through ages, through billions of years, your skin has to adapt to the harsh UV rays and sunlight. So, not only that, you will see most of us are having very dark hairs. We are having really dark hair and we have hair all over our body. Why is it so? Because these are protections. And second question, what I ask you? why if you see this picture, why all the melanosomes are located close to the nucleus. They are close to the nucleus because just logically think of it, the mutation takes place in the nucleus. So, in order to prevent any kind of mutations on the DNA, the nucleus in and around is kind of you know protected by these melanosomes which absorbs the UVs. And there is another interesting fact about this melanin pigment. Melanin is a very good semiconductor material. It is one of the prime organic semiconductor material and there are people who are working all over the world. If you shine light on it, it generates electricity. Okay? So, it has photovoltaic properties. So, whether that kind of role does it has any role? its electrical activity does it has any role and especially, especially when you shine UV light it generates higher amount of currents. Now, whether that has any linkage to the biological phenomena which are happening sensation happening on the top of the skin, we do not know. There is no study as of now has been demonstrated to tell whether on absorbing sunlight these melanin pigments which are present in my skin tell something to the nerve cells. We do not know that. So, it is a very open area of research and are there different kind of because light is an electromagnetic radiation, right. So, when these melanosomes containing huge amount of melanin pigment in them absorb sunlight, especially the UVs, they generate currents. Okay. So, this is one unexplored area which I wish to share with you people. So, these are the things. So, henceforth whenever you see a brighter complexion person or a darker complexion of person with respect to you, you yourself, do not think other ways. Just think that is very logical 
from where this person has originated. It has anthropological re reasons, it has a bioanthropological reason why some of us are brighter, some of us are darker. It has absolutely nothing to do with your origin, with your uh, religion, with your caste, creed, whatever you call it. Okay? So, get that thing in your mind. Okay? So, now what I will do from here, we will talk about another very interesting feature of this particular part. So, in this figure, I wanted to bring to your notice this layer, pinosum. In this layer, there is something very interesting. In the spinosum layer, you have a precursor of cholesterol related steroids, which is which, so you have these steroids present in this layer, which are very similar to, which is derivative of cholesterol. So, upon abs absorbing the UV, that is why UV say walk in the morning. So, these steroids transform into vitamin D or which is also called cholecalciterol okay? and this goes to the liver and calciferol and calcitriol. And this calcitriol is involved in absorbing calcium and phosphorus atoms. Okay. So, you see the skin on one hand, it not only protects you from UV rays, it utilizes the UV rays by a different set of cells where vitamin D is being synthesized from the steroid molecules which are present there. And these vitamin D eventually convert into calcitriol which absorbs calcium and phosphorus in your body. So, if there is a deficiency of vitamin D, most likelihood you will have a deficiency of calcium and phosphorus in your body. Apart from it, that very layer what we discuss is involved in secreting one of the growth factor which we call as EGF, epidermal growth factor, epidermal growth factor. Epidermal growth factor has several roles in the body, especially in the differentiation of the stem cells starting from that to whole gamut of activities it has. I am not getting into the details of it. As we progress into the course, there will be situations come. So, we will talk about epidermal growth factor, but for your knowledge remember it is the epidermal growth factor is secreted by this particular layers of cells. Okay? Now, after giving you this overall idea, I move on to the next layer which is the dermis layer. We have not talked much about it. Now, let me talk about the dermis layer. So, dermis layer we talked about two things. Okay. If I divide it, it was the papillary layer, if you remember it, underneath the basement membrane of the fifth layer from the bottom and the reticular layer. Papillary layer consists of areolar tissues and they have these capillaries and sensory neurons. Okay. Whereas, on the reticular layer, it is a, it's a loose connective tissue, irregular, loose and dense. connective tissue and these connective tissue are mostly interwoven with different kind of fibers. Mostly there are two kinds of fibers which are present there, collagen and elastin fibers. Okay? And this collagen and elastin fiber helps in, especially this elastin, collagen is very strict, elastin helps in bending and stretching. And whereas collagen gives it a shape. Okay. So, this is how so collagen gives it a shape, whereas elastin helps in the bending and the stretching. Okay. So, over a period of time, as we age, there are 
UV damages which keeps on adding up and they are a change in the hormonal milieus. What you see the, you get stretch mark on the skin and the, you get say the wrinkles. Those wrinkles comes wrinkles comes because of the damage to the collagen fiber in the dermis. So, in other word this particular dermis layer has direct role into your wrinkles due to aging and the stretch mark. These stretch marks are common which happens mostly in the women during childbirth and everything and in determining the lines of cleavage. What does that mean? I will come to that. Okay. So, <clears throat> what happens essentially if you stretch the dermis beyond a point. So, dermis layer has a stretching capacity based on its concentration of the elastin fibers. So, if you if you stretch it beyond it, it leads to permanent damage an extensive distortion and it reduces the capability of uh, it increase if you increase is beyond the level of the dermis stretch capability it fails to recoil back to its original shape and that what leads to the stretch marks okay this is the genesis of the stretch mark and there are some medicine which you will come across which are retin A or sometime the tritiotin. Tri one second, let me just correct it tritinoin. Okay. So, these kind of medicines which originally was uh, or were sold by pharmacological uh, companies to remove the acne or the pimples and that kind of things. It has been observed that these kind of medicine increases the blood flow in the dermis because dermis is rich in adipocyte tissues and the blood vessels and the nerve endings. So, apparently it has been observed that because of this added feature in these uh, pharmacological agents retin A, they help in reducing the stretch marks. So, there are people who use it, but what are the other side effects we are not aware of because increasing blood vessels may come at a cost or increasing the blood flow comes at a cost. So, we really do not know that part. Okay. So, apart from it there is another thing which I wish to highlight when so we talk about all these collagen fibers in the dermis layer. So, they are arranged in a fashion. So, something like this. So, if this is the side, I am just putting the side view just for you. So, these if you look at our body, the collagen fiber of the dermis layers are you know arranged in a very unique fashion like this. They follow a particular pattern. Now, say for example, as you go down, okay. now these, these are nothing but the collagen plus elastin fiber patterns. Okay. Now, what I wish to highlight here is that these collagen elastin fiber pattern. So, say for example, a dermatologist or a person wants to make an incision here or an incision here, incision here. Depending on how they do the incision, if they follow the line of these collagen fibers like this, they do the incision like this, they do the incision like this. So, then it will repair along it, but if they do an incision like this, like this, then it will leave behind the stretch marks. So, most of those surgeons who are really good surgeons, they follow a particular pattern how they are putting the incision into your skin. So, remember that. So, this is this is all have to do with your dermis. So, this is what I want you people to know about most of about the dermis. So, now from here we will talk about the accessory glands especially we will talk about the little bit detailed structure of the hair. Okay. 
So, if you look at the structure of the hair, the very first class when I drew it, so it was something like this, right. And underneath you will see Okay, and uh, out here you will see some very interesting features like you have the just one second, huh? You see the sebaceous gland, okay. So, <clears throat> this is the exposed shaft of hair. Okay, and here you have the sebaceous gland, and on the side I drew a lot of those uh, sweat glands and everything. Okay, so sebaceous gland is involved in oil production. It keeps your skin oily. Okay, and underneath the sebaceous gland, you have a very interesting smooth muscle tissue. We will talk later about what is a smooth muscle in the muscle section, but for the time being remember there is a smooth muscle called erector pili, erector pill muscle. Okay. Whenever you get scared or something you have seen, you get goosebumps, you know, all your like you know hair kind of straightened up. That actually happens because these muscles get activated. They lead to the, all those goosebumps what you see. Now, this is the exposed part of the hair and this is the hair shaft. And if you look at the structure of the hair in a cross section, you will see there are two parts. The one is the core part where you have the soft keratin molecules which are present along with the <coughs> melanocytes which are melanosomes. and melanocytes and melanin pigment which determine its black color. And then you have the bordering zone which is the cuticle and the cortex part, the cuticle and the cortex part which is rich in dead keratin molecules. Okay. And uh, out here underneath, out here what you see is the hair papillae from where the regeneration takes place okay and these are the hair roots this is the overall geometry what i wanted you people to remember about hair now there are at least three different kind of hairs you'll be surprised to know the hair development actually starts at around 3 months during embryonic development. The very first hair a baby develops in the mother's womb. Those, there is a word for that, it is called lanugo hairs. These hairs are set, so three embryonic months, EM stands for embryonic month. These were shed as soon as the baby is born. Later, there are two kinds of hairs which develops. One is called the terminal hair, which you see in your head. These are very dark pigmented hair and they absorb lot of UV rays, whereas there is another set of hairs which are called the vellus hair. They cover all over your body, but they are lesser pigmented. Okay? So, this is what I want you people to kind of understand about hair and this gland which is the sweat gland. This is apocrine and merocrine in nature. At this stage, I am not getting into the detail of the apocrine and merocrine because uh, we will talk about in the endocrine system. So, they secrete the electrolytes, water to maintain the balance. So, we have already talked about the UV protection role of the hair. It has very close in sensory connections, which ensures that uh, whenever you pull a hair, you get sensation. There are animals where they control the temperature by, by having a coat of fur and apart from it in your nostrils, in your ears, you have hairy lining which helps in capturing the different kind of dust and other particles. Now, the last thing which I will be very briefly dealing next two minutes will be 
the structure of your nails. So, this is how your nail grows. Okay. So, this is the free edge of the nail and this part of the nail, this is called lunula and this is the free edge and this is the proximal nail fold and this part, the lowermost here is called aponychium. Okay. So, now if you see a side view, if I hold the nail like this and you take a side view, the side view is mo much more interesting if you look at the side view. So, side view here you see the epidermis E p, here you see the dermis and there you see the eponychium which is present there. So, it is kind of a modification at certain parts of our skin where these kind of accessory structures have developed. So, this is by far what we needed to understand our integumentary system. Now, the next two class of this second week will be dealing with the bones and the development of bones and the different kinds of bones in your body, the skeletal system. Okay? Thank you.